right. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all, and welcome wherever you are on the planet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, this is the Founders Chat. Yes, folks, we are back together. We back. Uh, I was away. She was away. We're, we're trying to pull it together, but we're <laughs> back together. <laughs> the dynamic duo um, with the Founders Chat for Burn the Manual Productions. I am Anthony Carter, and I am here with... I'm Janae Williams. Yay. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Let's jump right in and get started. Uh, what's I, going on with you these days? <laughs> well, listen, I saw this there's this video because we were just talking about activism and all that and i i don't know if you heard about the people who threw a can of tomato soup on van gogh on the painting and then glued themselves to the wall because they were protesting climate change this just happened wow yeah i have to say in the video it's so interesting because there's so many mixed opinions out there um, there's some people saying that, oh, it's okay. Like, you know, they have protective stuff on the art. It's not damaged, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then some people are like, why Van Gogh? <laughs> why? <laughs> he was just very depressed. I don't understand why <laughs> you chose him to, oh for your climate crisis activism. But it it's so interesting because like, I feel like, you know, every few months we get at least some interesting bizarre or seemingly bizarre act of protest and uh that was the most recent one so i don't know okay i i please send that to me i haven't seen that yes. or heard about it um that sounds like the makings of a wonderful film yeah <laughs> or the beginning of a wonderful film like i would i'd want to go see that like if no, I'm about yeah. These <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so it's still my idea. It's still our, our our idea. Make a film, sweep the Oscars, and I'm gonna be set for life. Why should mm -hmm. I tell you? <laughs> um no, I like it. It's very powerful. We were just we were just talking about activism. Mm -hmm. And I was going to uh ask you, but you've already answered. I was gonna ask you about the extent. Mm -hmm. of activism or can we take it too far or what does really powerful activism look like to you but mm -hmm. you my friend have answered that question <laughs> <laughs> i mean for them i for me specifically mm -hmm. i am i 100 am not the type of person who's going to do that like i'm not going to glue my hand to a wall and throw paint you know uh tomato paste at a painting um part of my i think my best activism the best i have is being the best in my field or the best I can be in like okay. representing for people who don't look like me because so many times like if I'm working and I work for a company uh, I'm usually the only black woman in post-production okay. and that is one of those things they're just not there you know what I mean it's just a bunch of white men um, nothing wrong with a white man but it's something wrong when it's no space for you know people of color in there and it is one of, I don't know, it's just always been a weird experience for me to never see someone that looks like me at my dream jobs or, you know, what I mm. think would be my dream environment. It's just not. And so for me, I like to insert myself in those spaces to prove that, you know, you know, you can be here and you can be good and you can deserve to be here. And I think as of now, you know, I'm very sensitive. I don't want to be arrested. I am uh, <laughs> my best form of activism is uh, working really hard in my field. And I'll go to a couple of marches, you know, I'll be marching. <laughs> okay. um, and I think many times that just that, you know, just has to be enough. Yeah. And I think choosing to be excellent and break down barriers and open doors mm -hmm. and reach back and grab people and pull you know and say hey you know i created this space that was the one that this the space was already here yeah i came in and kind of laid the groundwork uh grease the skids if you will and now i'm opening the door you know mm -hmm. once you're excellent come we don't want people coming in just to come in yeah like, and i got think we need both we you know i mm -hmm. think we need both um okay people like me who are just you know 
I'm going to be here. And then you need the extremists because some people just aren't willing to be as extreme. Like if you're going to have a protester out there who's like, you know, marching the streets and being violent with their protest, you also need the black doctor who's going to save their lives, <laughs> you know, if something yeah. happens to go wrong. So I think there's so many ways to to protest and to like represent your people. Yeah, and I think you um you have to do whatever works, right? We I was just talking to some activists about an hour ago, right before you and I started talking. And I was asking, we're talking about activism and how you get basically how do you get eyeballs on an issue? How do you get people's mm -hmm. attention? Right. Because if what you're trying to do is get them to change their behavior, you've got to get them to change your belief system. Yeah. You know, for them to change their belief system, you've got to make them aware that something else exists mm -hmm. and they can do it a different way, right? And I was asking this group, I said, well, I don't know. I said, my goal is to have, you know, 10,000 Black men between the ages of 45 and I'm going to say 55, 45 and 60 mm -hmm. who are wanting to do it differently. Right. And when yeah. I say it, I mean health. When I make their mm -hmm. health a priority. Who want to live to be 150, who want to die because they're old, not because yeah. they've got preventable diseases. So my question to the group and to the presenters tonight was, well, how do you like how would I do that? Mm -hmm. Because because one of the one of the bullet points was, well, you know, you want to get to somebody who you kind of want to find people who are already in the same doing the same work and interested. How do you know that somebody interested in this, whatever this is, right? Yeah. And so what I told him, I said, well, you know, I wouldn't know. Right. I said, I wasn't super interested until I got um, shocked. You know, my doctor told me, you getting ready. To I'm surprised nothing has happened and you're getting ready to have mm -hmm. a stroke. Because yeah. the lady I was talking to in the, um, the activist night, she was saying, about sometimes you have to shock people mm -hmm. and to get them to act, to get them to take some action, right? Yep. Or to switch gears. Yeah. And so when she said that, I said, oh, yeah, that's very true, because I wasn't going to switch gears until I went to the doctor and they said, well, you know, what would you like? Would you want to yeah. you want to stroke out and be, you know, you know, bedridden or do you want to do something, you know, about it? Mm -hmm. So I think um, that activism, like you said, it has many, many levels. Yeah. And I think when you many times I think people underestimate the power of, of, of a quiet, methodical activism. Right, where you're coming yes. in and you're you're very you're determined and you make it easier for the next the next Malaya who's coming up, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the next young woman won't have the battles that you have, right? Yeah. The one after her won't have her. It's so, also so hard, like when I think about it, to change people's minds, at least for me, because when I think back when's the last time truly someone changed my mind about something now genuinely mm -hmm. I would think I'm like a genuinely decent person and I believe in more <laughs> progressive things so I don't think I have a lot to change but I don't remember the last time I'm sure it was something that I was like oh I was wrong about this certain situation or this ideology that I had and mm -hmm. they've changed me because I'm pretty set. <laughs> it's wild. That's <laughs> wild. When's the last time? When's the last time someone changed your mind? Um, that is a very good question. When you said that. I was like, mm, where is she going with this? <laughs> um, it's crazy though. A little scary. I would way. say mine is a little different because I look for. I was reading this today. And they were mm -hmm. talking about being in the position where you find out the more you know, the more you don't know, mm -hmm. right? So for me, I'm always I'm consistently putting myself in a position mm -hmm. where I get to be wrong. I get to find yeah. out because I don't know how you find out anything and learn anything if you know everything. Right. Or if nobody, you know what I mean? Or if you're not open to saying, well, let me look at this different. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times, um, I think the lat the the big one, I think that started the whole thing for me, and I've had several, mm -hmm. but the most recent one is the one I just mentioned when I went to the doctor. Somebody changed my mind. Um, yeah. She changed my mind about what I needed to do, right? Mm -hmm. And then I was around a lot of people who were just telling me, oh, that's just the way that it is. You can't do anything about it. Then I met somebody who said, oh, but you can do something about it. Like mm -hmm. you can, if you do, 
if you are a part of this culture, um, the culture being the Black Health Academy, if you're part of this culture and, you know, you kind of follow this regimen of eating and taking care of yourself, mm -hmm. you can prevent X, Y, and Z from happening or you can reverse it. Yeah. So to me, that was, a, that was an opportunity for me to say, oh, okay, you changed my mind mm -hmm. about what I can do to affect change on a personal level. Right. So it was kind of, it was one of those slow burns where I knew I wanted to do something different. I didn't know what was going to be different or how I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. But I stayed open to just the possibility that just maybe somebody knows something I don't. Right. right. Just maybe somebody has some information that can, you know, turn this around, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It happens. It happens. All but I mean, I feel like that way, I feel like a lot of times you change my mind about that. Mm. I feel like a lot of times we'll have, we have conversations or I'll see something you've done and uh, it's like, I know you have a new podcast about horror. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know you were into horror. And then I looked at it, I was it. like, okay. And I, I saw, I went on your website and I was looking at it and I thought, <laughs> hmm. Um, so speaking of which, and I, I, I'm going to listen to it, but I saw some of the, the little blurbs, the blurbs mm -hmm. that you have for people on there. Yeah. And talk about changing my mind. I have an interest in horror that I've had the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. And I always thought horror was stupid. Yeah. I was like, okay, well, I don't like being scared, right? Mm -hmm. But then I saw two things, two films back to back that had really good, they were really well done. Mm -hmm. and had really good plots and messages and themes. Okay. And then I realized, oh, this is another way to tell a story. Yeah. It's not just people ripping off faces or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> But I saw two really great films back to back. One with my granddaughter, who begged me to take it. I was like, I don't know if you should be going to see this, but she wanted to see it. I think I took her, I don't know why, maybe may have been for a birthday. I took her to see this film, and she kept, really she kept talking about it. She kept talking about it. Mm -hmm. Finally went to see it. And really, I would say about 20 minutes into it, maybe half, maybe halfway into it, mm -hmm. I remember having that that epiphany and I remember telling her she's sitting next to me in the theater I said this is really good you can really learn yeah some really pivotal lessons from watching and I was shocked mm -hmm. I was shocked <laughs> <laughs> and of course I went to see um uh was it Zombieland Double Tap the second one oh I didn't see it so I don't know if that's okay. even what Woody it is. Harrelson is in it it's the second one same uh, principle there was some there was some messages and some things and i thought this is a whole and i was with my yeah with my grandson we'd gone to the movies and i had the same thought like three minutes mm -hmm. in i was like a this is really good a this is written really well b this is written really well sorry and c it's like there's some serious life lessons in this movie yeah of course they're, they're shrouded in, in zombies exploding <laughs> but if you get past that. <laughs> so yeah, that was those are I live for the moments where I have my mind change mm -hmm. and I shift and I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to rethink this, but now I do. Yeah. So that's that. I think that's our time. Yeah, I think we're we're ready to wrap up. That was a great one. Okay. So well let's get out of here. Um Thank you for this wonderful talk. Tell folks where they can find you and I'll tell people they can find me and we'll be out of here. Yeah, my name is Anjane. You can find me everywhere at Malaya Music, um, burnthemanualproductions.com, it's spookyseasonpodcast.com, all of the above, so. <laughs> Great. Uh, I am Anthony Carter. You can find me at uh, one of two websites, anthony-carter.com for the written word, blogs, and that type of thing. Um, anthony-carter.com and burnthemanualproductions.com for all for videos, films, um, this podcast, mm -hmm. um, the longer podcast, Visionaries and Truth Tellers. Please check us out on any and all social media. Oh, I'm also all over Twitter too, at mm -hmm. Anthony L. Carter. Um, that's it, folks. We will talk to you soon.